guys to the Million Dollar Service Space Blueprint. This is our thesis at Closer.io of the fastest, most effective way to scale any coaching course, consultant, online service, agency, business, any high ticket business to 100K a month, if not more. So what we're gonna cover is a quick intro, two phases to get to 100K a month, keep it very simple. And then after you watch this video, if you wanna know how to get past 100K a month to the multiple millions per month, there's another video, we'll put it on the screen right now, of when I was taking an early morning walk and I really broke down five phases to get to multiple eight figures. It's a casual video, it's not a training like this, but it'd be a good sequel to this. So even if you're past 100K a month, watch this first, there's still a lot of good stuff in here, and then go to that one after that. Now, quick intro, Cole Gordon here, closes IO. Uh, we did 2.8 million cash last month, 40% profit. We're known as really the category king of sales training, sales recruiting, and ultimately teaching online service-based businesses on how to scale. And we also have the only mastermind, our eight-figure boardroom, that is dedicated to helping service-based businesses and online you know, coaching, consulting, course programs go from 100K a month to a million a month plus. So it's 100K a month minimum to get in that mastermind. And then we have a ton of people over a million a month plus, but really the goal is to get into the eight multiple eight-figure level. And we're really the only mastermind in the space that specifically serves that segment of people. So some clients we work with, Big Tone, we got Grant Cardone here, Gore Financial, Frank Kern, Dean, Jay Abraham, Rich Sheffrin, Todd Brown, Jeff Lerner, Tanner Chister, Alaric Heck, the YouTube ads guy, and uh, really a thousand plus others in the past three years now. So we've been really, really lucky and honored to be able to serve those people in the capacity of helping them build their sales teams, sales training, and really even helping just their entire business as a whole. Now, it wasn't certainly always that way to rewind. I lost all my money when I started to try to start an online business seven years ago, and I actually got into high ticket sales just to get by. And I ended up being the best sales rep on the first team I was on, the second team I was on, and then finally on my third team, I went to Traffic and Funnels under Taylor Welch and Chris Evans. I helped them, I wasn't the sole reason or anything, but I helped them go from 300 grand a month to 1.5 million a month and learned so much in doing that experience in the process. Then when I left to be a sales coach, I did 70K in my first month, 210K in my third month as a sales team consultant. And within 18 months of starting, we had a $30 million a year run rate with 80 plus employees and a fantastic profit margin. Now, that's not for me to brag, this is not about me. The reason I'm telling you that is because one, I have a done for you service-based business and I have a coaching course online training type business as well. And they're both above the eight figure level. So the reason that's important is I'm still doing and I've actually done what you're likely trying to do. And not only done that, well, not only that, but I've done it at the highest level possible. So bluntly put, I think you should at least listen to what I have to say, given my results, and then decide what out of what I say, what you wanna take away and apply to your company. But I think it would serve you well to at least listen to the experiences that I had and what I wanna share. So what are we gonna talk about today? The two phases to get to 100K a month, and if you've already gotten to 100K a month, this would be a great sequel to after that, okay? But I still watch this video first. It's a YouTube video on the screen right here, then you can watch this one after. It's a lot more casual video, not a training. So anyways, let's begin. So phase one is validation. Now, I'm gonna make a bet, okay? Everything I'm about to tell you, you've probably heard a version of this before. I would be surprised if this doesn't feel new. But the interesting thing is, for the same people it doesn't feel new to, 75% of them can't even scale past 100K a month because of this very reason, okay? Especially this applies if you're a full service agency, you're a marketing consultant, a business coach, like those types of businesses, y'all are probably guilty of this, okay? So listen closely, all right? Phase one's all about validation. There's three key outcomes we need to achieve to essentially have what I call validation, all right? The first one is packaging. So packaging, the very first thing is we have to follow what's called the 3S formula. So a good way to think of packaging, by the way, is packaging is not what the offer is per se, but it's the messaging of how it's communicated effectively to the marketplace, okay? Now, that messaging of how it's communicated effectively to the marketplace needs to follow the 3S formula. Okay, that means you have to solve a specific problem for a specific person a specific way. We're gonna cover some examples in a second. But that 3S formula is required for cold acquisition, cold client acquisition. And that doesn't just mean paid ads, that's any sort of cold client acquisition that you're doing. There's a lot of issues if you don't have the 3S formula down. All right, number one, you'll never get cold acquisition to work. We just talked about that. Number two, you'll never be able to charge premium pricing. Like you probably already know who gets paid more, the specialist or the generalist, the specialist, the brain surgeon or the family doctor, the brain surgeon, okay? So you kind of know this stuff, but chances are you're not doing it. And we're gonna cover some examples to help you do it in just a second. The th second thing is economics. 
So you have to have pricing that initially gives you 70 to 80% plus margins. Like when I started, I got to almost 150 grand, 200 grand a month with just me and a few employees. I was doing pretty much everything myself, but I probably had 80% plus profit margins all the way through that. So you have to have those margins in the beginning, not long term, but in the beginning, so that when you start hiring, those you have room for those margins to come down, which gives you the good scalability. Too many people start off, their margins are so thin that like as soon as they start to hire more people, they get into this bottleneck, and instead of creating a business, they have a glorified job because they have no choice but to do it themselves because they can't have the budget to hire somebody else to do it or to find great people. The third thing is scalability. So you have to have a fulfillment system that can hold enough clients for you to do 100 to, 200, 200 to 300 grand a month, okay? If you can't take on enough clients to surpass a seven-figure goal, you have to change the model, okay? Now, this does not mean, like what we wanna do is plan in advance. Could my model scale to 300 grand a month? Now, that doesn't mean that you have to hire out all the positions when you're at 50K a month and not do anything. Okay, quite the opposite. You actually should do all the roles first in your business, but you need to have the right model. So you might have the right model and you're, and you're, and you're still doing everything yourself, that's fine. But then eventually, slowly by slowly, you're giving that to your team members, okay? Very, very key. Now, if you have the right packaging and scalability, but you don't have the right economics, you're gonna have weak margins and ability to hire. If you have economics and scalability, but you don't have the right packaging, you'll never get cold acquisition to work. If you have the right packaging and you have the right economics, but you don't have the scalability, you're gonna have constant fulfillment bottlenecks. Constant, 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 okay? If you have all three, you have validation. So let's go over the key classic bad example, okay? And this isn't just for agencies, but this is the easiest example to give is my everything to everybody, full service, one-stop shop, I do websites, SEO, PPC, full service marketing agency. Now, look, I am well aware there's people like Neil Patel that do over 100 million with a full service agency, okay? Now also keep in mind, these are huge contracts that they're doing, and typically they're working with big Fortune 1000 companies, okay, or, or even bigger than that, you know, Fortune 100, Fortune 500, et cetera. And on top of that, Neil has a very unique acquisition system because he's really good at what he does, and a lot of what he's doing is coming from SEO and just organic and brand. So he can go very broad in that sense. For a lot of us who are bootstrapping, we don't have that initial huge brand, we gotta do things a little bit differently, okay? So we need to have those three things. And let's go through the issues with the full service marketing agency usually along these three things. So packaging, because you do everything for everybody, there's no specific person, no specific problem or method, and you can't detail that. And because of that, it's gonna be really hard for your cold acquisition to work. It's very hard to make an ad just saying, hey, we'll just do all your, your you know, online needs, okay? That just doesn't work. There has to be a problem-based niche. And I'll give you an example of what a good one looks like in a second, okay? This is why typically you constantly rely on referrals, word of mouth, you know, networking, stuff like that. Economics, okay? Because you do everything for everybody, you're not a specialist. Because you're not a specialist, you can't charge premium pricing because you can't charge premium pricing. Your margins suck. Because your margins suck, you don't have the profitability or scale to hire a team. And because of that, you're doing everything yourself and you get burned out. I've seen this a hundred times at the agencies. Scalability. Because you do everything for everybody, the client journey is different for every single person. Person, right? If you have an SEO client or a PPC client or a website client or a brand design client, those are all different. So the client journey is all different. There's no standardized one client journey of the business. So this means what happens is typically you have to outsource a ton, which is very, very expensive. And on top of that, you know, generally it's hard to find, maybe you find a unicorn outsourcer, right? But it's hard to find really, really, really good outsourcers that will outperform what you could have built in-house. So you either have to outsource it, which is expensive, not as quality, or you do it all yourself. And likely what's happening is you're selling all the clients yourself too because clients are coming on with all these different types of problems and every single different type of deal is customized. So because of that, you have no standardized process, that diagnostic and prescription process to teach a salesperson. And unless the salesperson just happens to be this crazy expert at this type of stuff. All in all, with this, you don't have what I call the conveyor belt, which we're gonna cover right now. So here's a good example, and you'll see how the conveyor belt applies in a second. We're an e-commerce agency that specializes in CRO for brands doing over a million a year in an online store, right? You could even make this more specific and make it health brands. I just don't think it's necessary in this example. So I just made this up, even though I do have a client that does this. And the, the specific problem is low conversion rate on checkout pages, okay? The person, e-com brands over a million a year. 
specific way, whatever the, your detailed way of doing it is, okay? You just have, like, you have to ask yourself, what makes what you do unique, different, superior than everybody else? What's the common mistake people are making in the marketplace and what you do differently so that you can have a different result? Now, that's the packaging. The economics, look at this. You're now a specialist, you can now charge more, your margins are better, and it's easier to hire a team, okay? Scalability, this is really key. Because now, everybody's coming in with the same problem and they want the same result. Now, what happens is you have the conveyor belt. So we can create a standard operating procedure for every part of our fulfillment process and then teach our team systematically how to do it. Because it's very easy to hire people to have them do one thing, to hire people to have them do 17 different things and have to like, how to problem solve. It's very easy to just have them hire to do one thing. Because since every single client's gonna come on, in this example, every single client, low conversion rate, they want better conversion rate. They're also the same type of business. They're also the same type of revenue. You're gonna be doing the same thing every time. So that really streamlines it. It eliminates complexity, which means it actually improves your margins and releases fulfillment bottlenecks. Okay, because you can see it's like a conveyor belt. And on the sales side, it's the very same thing. The salesperson's diagnosing the same problem for the same business, giving the same insight of why their problem's their problem, what they need to do to fix it. They're giving the same prescription. So now we could scale sales as well. You see what I mean? So once you develop that offer that has the right packaging, economics and scalability, you've sold it yourself 10 to 20 times, that's very key. Then we can go on to phase two. Phase two is called the OSS the optimal selling system. So I got this from Michael Masterson, that's the pen name of Mark Ford, who's the uh, co-founder and business partner of Bill Bonner with Agora, is over a $1.5 billion company. And the outcome of the optimal selling system in AKA phase two is to find a consistent, repeatable, predictable, and scalable way to generate new business revenue on an ongoing basis. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that. Consistent, repeatable, predictable, scalable way generate a new business revenue on an ongoing basis, okay? Now you might be thinking, duh, okay? I already know I need to find a way to consistently gener generate new business, new interest, new revenue, right? And I am sure you do. But again, similar to phase one, let me just say, if you're below a million a year, and even if you're below three million a year and your bottleneck is leads, there's a 90% chance that you don't know how to do this correctly. I mean, at any point in your company, if you're bottleneck on leads, it's probably because of, about, of, of what I'm about to show you. Okay, and once you master this, hitting 100 grand a month to around 500 grand a month in any online service-based business is actually pretty easy when you combine these two phases. Okay, phase three is an entirely different skill set of how to get from probably about 200 to 500-ish range to a million a month, totally different skill set. But these two things is all you need to get to 100 to 500 grand a month. So with that being said, let's break this down. Optimal selling system. So there's two components of this. We need the consistent, repeatable, predictable, scalable way to generate interest, AKA leads, and then consistent, repeatable, scalable way to convert that interest into business, into dollars, okay? So you could see the diagram I have at the bottom here. I have signal, right? We're throwing out a signal to the marketplace that generates interest. That interest gets found in a conversion mechanism and a portion of that interest gets converted into business slash money. Okay, customers. Now what's really, really, really key here is this has to be a system. What's one of the properties of most systems? There's different types of systems, but in most systems, what's one of the properties? Well, when there's an increase in inputs into the system, there's a correlation of increase out of the system. That might not be a one-to-one -one increase to outcrease, but there is a correlation between more inputs in and more outputs out. Okay, we'll talk about how this is so important and the following slides. The other thing is, in order to have this, in order to have an OSS, it's a conveyor belt, right? We want a conveyor belt. A conveyor belt means it's like a business. But to do that, we gotta have a specific problem for a specific person a specific way. If we don't have that, our signal's not gonna work. Does that make sense? So again, you gotta have this to work to have cold acquisition. So all this is building on top of each other, all right? So let me give you a classic bad example. Full service marketing agency, how do they get business? Word of mouth referrals, they go to an event here and there, trade show, networking, inconsistent business for some like random social media profiling. Even if this company is doing a million to two million a year, they're gonna be bottlenecked by not having an optimal selling system. Even if they're doing a million a year, likely what's happening is the owner is doing everything themselves, they're doing all the sales, they gotta direct all the fulfillment, even if they do have help, and it's just not a business, it's just so dependent on them. Like a business at the end of the day is a system. Like Robert Kiyosaki says, you wanna have a system, a business is a system, okay? And if you left for six months, 
where would you still have a business after you came back? Now, if you have a true system that doesn't rely on you, you would, but most, most people don't. And that's very normal when you start off, but you need to build it from the right foundations, right? That's why we're watching this and making this presentation. So knowing this, what does a good optimal selling system look like in practice? Okay. So I'm going to credit Alex Ramosi here. Uh, one of his YouTube videos started or it talks about the six ways to generate leads. There's word of mouth referrals, affiliates, own media, earn media, paid media, and outbound. Now, any of these could work and actually technically be a system to be clear, but some are better than others. And in my experience, working with a thousand plus clients now who are usually uh, our lowest clients are usually like 30 to 50 grand a month. And we have clients doing over hundred million a year. I know and have a very, very good feeling and impulse of what works. Okay, so I'm gonna share that with you, but let's go through these one by one. All right, word of mouth referrals. So could this be a system? Yes, but for it to work, you'd have to have a predictable system to where you know how many referrals you're to get per client, okay? And that would have to be above, preferably 1.1 per every client enrolled. Now, technically it could be below 1.1, but at that point your churn would have to be very low. Ideally, for you to really scale with referrals, for every client that comes on, you need, you need to at least get on average 1.1 referrals, okay? And also you need to keep churn pretty doggone low. So this is hard. Now, can you scale in these really low churn businesses, you know, software, for instance, can you scale off word of mouth referrals? hundred percent, even a service-based business, you can scale across word of mouth referrals. But let me tell you this, I've worked with thousands of businesses. I've maybe seen the top word of mouth referral business out of my entire portfolio of clients do 300 to 400 grand a month. And that was like almost a unicorn. Okay. So it's very, very difficult. It's not predictable. And it's not something I would rely on as your strategy. Doesn't mean you shouldn't work word of mouth referrals, make your product good. I'm just saying like, I would follow the proven pathway and it's not this. Okay. It doesn't mean you shouldn't work referrals and your product be good affiliates. Okay. So to do this, to make it an optimal selling system, a predictable conveyor belt, you'd have to find new affiliates. You have to get them interested. You have to convert them into affiliates. You have to onboard and activate them into successful affiliates. And then you have to retain them and then repeat that at scale. Now, could that be an optimal selling system? Yes. Now, have I ever seen a service-based business do that out of the thousands of my clients? I have not. Okay. Now I've seen this done with supplements. I have seen this done with software. I have seen this done with more lower ticket products, like a 1k course or below. Jason Flagellin is a good example, but off the top of my head, I can't think of a service-based business or a coaching consulting agency business that used affiliates to scale to let's say a million a month or 500 grand a month. I can't think of one. I would love to hear an example. You know, you can uh, let me know if you're watching this on YouTube, put it in the comments. I would love to know. So I'm not saying it's impossible. It certainly is. But out of me working with a thousand plus clients, have I ever seen anybody really utilize this as an OSS? No, okay? So it's just not the proven pathway in my opinion. Same thing with owned media, okay? Technically, could be an optimal selling system. I work with two brands, I can't really say who they are, but you know who they are. Like two of the biggest brands in the personal development and, and info industry, they're doing nine figures a year. I mean, if they launch a new offer, they could totally fuel the offer just from their email list and the media they own. That's because their email list is three, four, five million people strong. Now, if you're an agency starting off and you're really that specialist, like that e-commerce CRO agency, you're probably not gonna have it a million person list. You're probably not even gonna have a hundred thousand person list, okay? And so it's very, very hard for a lot of us to do this, but it could be uh, what fuels your optimal selling system, just probably not. Very similar to own media, earn media. Okay. So again, it could be an optimal selling system, but in my experience to really get it, to give you that consistent conveyor belt, you got to have like probably over a million followers, or if you have lower, I would say 300 to 500 K plus very active, engaged followers. Okay. And even at that, it could run out, but it's also not ideal because let, even let's say you have 500 K followers, you put out three videos a week on YouTube and you're getting really good views and it's filling your sales calendars. You have two sales reps. that's filling those sales calendars consistently. That's great. That's technically a system, but that system depends on you pumping out three videos a week. So it's kind of not a system. If you went away, would you still have that business? No, that's the issue. Okay. So can you do it hundred percent? I would say about I don't know, about 5% of my clients, you know, maybe a little bit less. Every once in a while, I have some come along with a million YouTube subs, 2 million, or just huge, you know, YouTube followings to where they never need to touch any of this other stuff. They just leverage their brand, which is great. But for most of us, you know, this is not the proven strategy of, of what we're going to do if we're starting from zero. Now, the last two are a lot more proven. And I do see this allow people to get to seven and even eight figures much more often outbound. So again, I've had thousands of clients. Many of them have donor over a million in rev. I'd say five to 10% of people 
I know have gotten to a million a year, five to 10% out of my thousand plus clients have gotten to a million a year solely through cold outbound. That could be cold email people, cold emailing people, cold calling people, cold DMing people. If I took every 10 people of my clients at 100K a month, I'd say one of them got there for, through cold email, cold calling, and cold DMs. The next, the 90 other 90% I'm gonna share with you in a second, okay? Now this works because when you raise the inputs into the system, you get more outputs, it's a system. Okay, you can add more dialers, you can make more dialers, you can build new sales teams, you can build new DM teams. And as you build that and the inputs increase, you get more outputs. This could easily scale, I'm sure, to eight figures, multiple eight figures, outbound. Cold, cold, old fashioned outbound. I have never personally seen out of all of the clients I've ever had, which is a lot, okay? And I just have my thumb on the pulse of our market, probably like nobody else does. I have never seen somebody take this over a million a month, solely through this. Now, let me be very clear. Maybe Alex Ramosi's gym launch, but that's about it. Let me be very clear. Do I think it's possible? Yes. But is it the predictable proven route that I would follow if I was just starting off? No. What I would follow is paid media, okay? I've had thousands of clients. I've had so, so many get past 100K a month. I probably had the most eight figure clients out of anybody in the industry. And what I'll say is about 90, 95% of all those who get to seven or even eight figures, it's all paid media. So take that with what you want. I would just probably focus on a strategy of paid media, which is what we're gonna talk about in a second. Why is it so effective? Because you have your input, which is ad spend, and the creative, and the VSL, and the funnel, and the more ad spend you put in, the more outputs you get. Is it a corollary one-to-one -one input to output? No, but I would say, it does, I mean, it diminishes over time. There's diminishing returns. However, it does have that inputs to outputs like nothing else that I've ever seen personally. Outbound's also good as well. It also has leverage, okay? You do it once, you reap the benefits for a long time. You throw out a few creatives, you find the proven one, you have the proven funnel. You gotta do some testing. But once you have that, uh, you know, you crack the funnel, so to speak, you reap the benefits for a long time. It's fast, especially compared to other methods, and it's accessible. Like nowadays, anybody can run Facebook, TikTok, or YouTube ads, okay? So bottom line, I'm not gonna sit here and say paid media is the only way to do it, it's not. Okay, I'm sure there's businesses, and, and you could prove me wrong, you could probably find a seven-figure example for every single one of those acquisition methods and an eight-figure example. But let me just say this again, like I've observed thousands of businesses coming through our stuff and 95% do paid media. So if I was just looking probably for the most proven, predictable, highest probability way to get there, I, that's what I would do. And then that's really what I'm telling you to do as well, in most cases, okay? So again, paid media is the way. With that being said, the question becomes, What's the best paid media model for my business? Well, let me explain the model, and this is at a very high level that we use to get to 2.8 million cash collected last month, okay? That would have been October, all right, of 2022. So I call it the MDR model, here's how it works. There's a different variations. There's three core variations of this funnel, but they all follow this basic format. We run an ad, okay? We collect a lead. Now we collect the lead in two different ways. There's indirect and direct. So we'll either go out to the marketplace with our messaging and just state our offer, that's direct. Or what we'll do is we'll either tell a story or we'll kind of allude to a secret or allude to something valuable that's not necessarily communicating the intent of our offer, but is something that maybe is a freebie or whatever that somebody in the market wants. So typically when we go into the market, we'll start in direct. We'll just state our offer to make sure we have product market fit. And then we'll try to beat that control within direct. All right, a great example is this, is I might just have a direct offer to a lead form, but then later on what I'll do is do indirect and try to beat that control by sending it to a 20 minute VSL. The title of the VSL is something that's very valuable to the prospect, but doesn't explain anything about our offer. We have ad, we get the lead, we do that through direct or indirect, and then we have a conversion content, okay? Or a conversion mechanism is a better way to put it. So what that means is let's say it's direct. We just might have a sales letter that just states our offer or a video that states our offer, okay? Or it's a lead form and in the ad, the offer is already stated, done. Or let's say on the very, very other side of the spectrum, the conversion content's a two hour long live webinar, right? To where we're starting indirect, we're giving a bunch of value and then we CTA. Now, you've probably heard of all that before. Here's where we get a little bit different, all right? We obviously email heavy every single lead that we get. I'm telling you, if you're not emailing your list 40 times a month, you're totally missing out. We email, not every day, 40 times a month, both lists. And this is the kicker. What we do and what really, really brought to the industry, at least the coaching industry, three or four years ago, Outbound's been around as long as the phone. But what we really brought is the MDR process three or four years ago and really popularized that 
to where we use an outbound MDR team, which means marketing development reps, okay? They're like outbound reps, but they capitalize on leads generated by marketing. And what they do is they immediately, within five, 10 minutes, call and text every single lead that we collect. And the majority of the revenue we do is not actually from the conversion content. The majority is always from our outbound setting team capitalizing on leads generated by marketing. And in fact, when we switch to this method from solely relying on marketing to book all of our sales appointments, our business exploded, okay? Now obviously, be it the conversion content, email, MDRs, SMS, whatever, all of that filters it down into the sales process, okay? So by now, you know that phase one validation is the foundation you need to lay your bricks upon, okay? You also know the most proficient way to get your optimal selling system phase two solidified. And finally, you know that the MDR model is the model that we use to scale to 30 plus million in 26 months. So that said, you might be wondering, okay, you talked about three variations of the MDR model. What are those? What's the best one for my company? I don't know anything about paid media. So how do I launch ads? How do I work? Should I do YouTube? Should I do TikTok? Should I do Facebook? What do I do if I have a little budget? I'm not sure if I can structure the offer the way you mentioned. You also might have questions about our sales recruiting and how we can place reps into your business, setters and closers. I would love to answer all of these questions on this call or on this uh, video. I'd like to tell you what the uh, variations and the exact ad templates and copy and offer structures we use. But um, if I was to do that, that would be an entire program and or an entire video series. So if you're interested in learning more, here's what I want you to do next steps. There should be a link below somewhere. You can book a call with one of our advisors. On that call, our advisor can help you learn about your business. And after 15 minutes of just kind of learning about your business a little bit, what we'll do is we'll tell you the three to four steps we would take if we were you to hit your goal. Okay, regardless if your goal is 100K a month or 3 million a month. Now, if your goal is 200 million a year and you're already doing 50 million, we might not be able to help you because we've never been there, okay? But if it's 3 million a month below, we'll tell you the three to four things we would do if we were you, step by step by step to be able to get there, okay? And that's based on our experience of actually getting there and also our experience of generating hundreds of case studies to help them keep people get to seven figures and having probably more eight-figure case studies than anybody in the industry. After we lay out the plan, you could choose to implement that plan with us, or you could say, no thanks, you can implement it on yourself. Regardless, I'd recommend you at least get the call. The call's free. Hop on the call, see what you have to say, and uh, you know, take it from me to where I, I really believe there's no other company out there that's able to be one, produce such outstanding for results for themselves and their clients a certain amount of time, and number two, more importantly, be able to replicate those results for their clients. Because essentially, it's one thing to be a great player, but sometimes the best player isn't the best coach, okay? So links to book a call below. Thank you for watching this video again. We also do sales recruiting and sales training. So uh, if you want setters placed into your business or closers placed into your business, we obviously help with that too. That is our core business. This video is really about the foundations of what's gonna make your sales team phenomenal in the first place. Because if you don't have phase one, you don't have phase two, it's very hard to build the sales team around that. So thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you soon.